every year, Roebuck Bay on the Kimberley coast becomes home for many thousands of migratory shorebirds. Travellers from distant breeding grounds on the Arctic tundra, they live a life free from winter, chasing the summer sun from one end of the earth to the other. Over their long lives, birds may fly further than from here to the moon. If birds can be tagged with individual markers, they can then be tracked across their global travels. The first step is the cannon netting operation, catching, marking and releasing of birds by teams of enthusiastic volunteers. Good morning. Welcome to Roebuck Bay, adjacent to the town of Broome in northwestern Australia. You join me here in the middle of our winter, still beautiful and sunny. This is the time when all our immature birds are here in the bay. Our adult birds are actually taking one of their enormous migratory flights to breed in the Arctic. My role out here today is twofold. One is to find a good place where we can catch some birds tomorrow by checking out all the roost sites, see where the birds are gathering, and that'll inform me for my placement of the net tomorrow. And the other job I can do as well is look for birds that we've already banded, birds that we've put special marks on already. I can record those birds. And basically every time I record one out in the field, it's an equivalent to actually re-trapping the bird, catching the bird in the net again. So we gather an enormous amount of information by only having to actually capture the bird once, which is obviously a lot less work for us and a lot better for the birds as well. Later on, you'll see all that process of us capturing the birds and putting on various methods of marking them, plain flags, engraved flags, and the, particularly the project that I am conducting where we've got coloured bands on the legs of the bird, so each bird is individually marked. I'm conducting this work for two groups, for the Global Flyway Network, who are funded with money from Holland, of all places, even though I'm working here in the northwest of Australia, and the Australasian Way to Study Group, which is a volunteer group uh, associated with Birds Australia. So to start with, what is a migratory bird? Well, these birds are trans-equatorial migrants. They're breeding grounds where the adults go to lay their eggs and the chicks are hatched out is way up here in northern Russia. Some birds in China and so some in southern Russia, but most of our birds from the coast go right up to the high Arctic tundra, and that's their breeding season. And then on their southern migration, they funnel back all through Asia and back into Australasia, including New Zealand. A little bit of bias here, one of the most important sites in the entire flyway is right here, Roebuck Bay, just adjacent to Broome. A phenomenal place. Huge numbers of birds, around about 120,000 birds in the middle of the Austral summer. And then in March and April the following year, as spring begins to be sprung in the Northern Hemisphere, the birds return. So every year they're doing these enormous migrations back and forth from the Arctic breeding grounds. These birds are not gliding on the wing on big broad wings. They've got sharp, narrow wings for fast flight and they're flapping every beat of the way. They may use jet streams to help propel them along, but it's not a gliding flight, it's a fast flapping flight. So an enormous amount of energy required to undertake those journeys, which is why places like Roebuck Bay are so critical so the birds can pile on lots of weight by feasting on this rich food in the mud, they pile on the weight, 50, 60, 70, 80% of their body weight, mostly as fat, and that propels them on these enormous journeys. Now, why is Roebuck Bay so special? It's actually not what we're seeing now. What we've got is the high tide. So the tide has come in and the birds are roosting. They're resting and roosting on all these sandy beaches on the northern shores of Roebuck Bay. But what they really need is food. And here in Roebuck Bay, we've got enormous tides, 11 metre tides. So when the sea goes out behind us here, we'll end up with about three kilometres of mud flats here. And in the southern areas of the bay, up to 12 kilometres of mud flats, covered and uncovered twice a day as the tides ebb and flow. And that mud is packed full of food. There's all manner of invertebrates and a remarkable diversity of food out there for the birds. So the next job we have will be tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning when we're preparing for our cannon net catch. 
we'll head off down to the beach. Uh, we'll bury our cannons and our net down into the sand, camouflage it carefully. Uh, I've made the decision on which beach, not this beach, a beach uh, further uh, to the west of us, made that decision and we will set up, our volunteer group will gather and we will go out and see if we can actually get some of these beautiful migratory shorebirds in our hands and gather some more data on them. All right, we're ready guys. Quarter two. We're going out to try and catch some migratory shorebirds, okay, and uh, to mark them for our uh, migration studies. Hopefully, we'll get the birds in front and fire the net and you will race down to the net and the first thing you'll see is a net three times the size of this out on the beach and probably into the water, having been fired by these heavy metal projectiles. There will be three of these projectiles stretched out on the beach, possibly into the water. You need to find them. Best way to find them is to get the ropes, grab hold of them, and you need to pull them up. The side ones right at the side of the net, not on the net, at the side of the net. The middle one just behind the net, and the other one at the side. We'll then get 12 or 15 of us, down on your knees, in front of the net, and we're going to move the net like a forklift truck. You get your arms under it like this, you keep it low, and particularly if there's a bit of a wave, all together, I'll be at the back shouting, we will move the net together. Three, two, one, move the net, and you do it boldly, okay? You will have birds in front of you bouncing around in the water, they'll have a bit of sand on them, but what you have to do is not concentrate on those two or three birds in front of you. You have to look at the big picture. We've got 200 birds. We've got to work on the whole thing. So as, as you go, this net comes up. The birds will get a little bit rolled up in it as, as we get it out of the water. But eventually we end up where I'm happy that it's above the tide and we're going to have enough time to take the birds out. I will then say, OK, leave the net now and I'll get everybody to go round to the back of the net and to sand the back of the net. And then basically just get handfuls of sand and stone all the way along the back and a good three quarters of the way down the side. In fact, right down to where the net's bunched up down the side. Okay, we've piled sand all around the net and the next process we're going to do is a very safe way of moving the birds up the beach. Now they're on dry sand, we don't want to push the net and push them along the sand. So you get your toes on the front edge of the net. There's going to be a whole line of us, 15 of us, along the front of the net. And then once again, don't think about the two birds in front of you, or the 10 birds. Reach out as far as you can, lift the net, furl the net towards you, and hold it like that. We can make a great big tent, and 200 birds will run up the beach, five or six or seven metres, no, no pushing, no stress on the birds. It's fantastic, okay? Now it is full on. We've got 200, well, who knows? We might have none, we might have 300, who knows? Well, hopefully we're gonna have a couple of hundred birds in the net and we do need to do things quickly and efficiently. I won't have time to say, oh now, what's your name? Jesse. Jesse, come with me, Jesse. Can you just do this? It'll just be, oi, in that corner. Oh, there is no time for politeness. I will be loud and I will be brusque, all right? and you just cope with it. Once it's out the water and the birds have all run up the beach, we then put some green shade cloth on. That will stop them flapping around. It'll settle them down, keep the sun off them. It's very important when you come to the net that you don't work on the net at all. You must work around the net. As you run towards the net, you might come flying in from this side and go, oh look, he's only caught 20 birds in that corner. So instead of running all the way around, I'm going to get straight over there really quickly and get on working on those birds and tuck behind a little rock in here or in a footprint on the beach. We're catching birds possibly this size. You're going to put your foot straight on it. So you work around the net. The cages are already beautifully set up by a, a bunch of the students. The birds had a great big net thrown over it. We've been handling it. What you want to do is cradle the bird. It's absolutely a natural instinct. I don't want you to do that. 
I want them held away from you so their legs are hanging down, don't tuck the legs in, and then those legs can kick around and they don't get any problems with cramp. They're a bit stressed and if we start tucking their legs up, they're gonna get cramp in their legs. So, like that. If you don't know the species, don't be proud. Ask. We got a lot of red knots going up as great knots last time. If you don't know the species, ask somebody, okay? And at the cages, there will be a label in the middle here that says red neck stint. So you've got a red neck stint. These are not red neck stints. Flick the flap back. Bird goes in bill first. And it's important then that you reach down and put it on the floor, okay? There might be a big rush and me making lots of noise at the net saying quickly, come back, come back, we've got more birds. But you don't drop it from just there. It's only 30 centimetres, but that's, if the bird's not ready, that's not good for it. So you put the bird in and right down on the sand. We then put some star pickets in, make a nice tented effect over the birds. And we also uh, make another uh, tent for us to, to work under. And then we do the interesting thing, which is the banding and the weighing and the measuring. I will try and get new people to do some banding and measuring things. So I will do my best to get you to get your hands on birds and do some of that. But there's loads of carrying of birds back and forth. And on release, the birds of prey around here very quickly learnt over the years. If they see green shade cloth, they go, oh, I know what that means. It means there's a few little dodgy little birds who've been upside down and they're just a little bit dizzy and we might get an easy meal. So no releasing of birds on their own. They will all be released in, in groups of anything from 40 to 80. It just depends on how things develop. And before we do that, it's very important we scan the skies and make sure there's no eagles or kites roaming around, okay? And if there is, that's fine. We can just wait for five minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour until those birds have drifted away. So we let the birds go where there's no birds of prey around, okay? That's probably it. When we're down there, I'm afraid you won't get to see the action on the beach, okay? The net's been set. We need to keep completely out of view of the beach so the birds can come in and not be disturbed. So you don't get to see the action on the beach. Anything else? All right, so let's go down there. 